Here we've got the CEO of OpenAI and Microsoft with a legendary investor from Silicon Valley talking about one of the world's most important topics in the world. If you're interested in tech, this is a must watch. Greg Brockman, say on CNBC a couple of weeks ago, right? If we could 10x our compute, we might not have 10x more revenue, but we'd certainly have a lot more revenue. Simply because of lack of compute power. Things like, yeah, it's just, it's really wild when I just look at how much we are held back. And in many ways we have, you know, we've scaled our compute probably 10x over the past year. But if we had 10x more compute, I don't know if we'd have 10x more revenue, but I don't think it'd be that far. And we heard this from you as well last night, Sacha, that you were compute constrained and growth would have been higher even if, if you had more compute. So help us contextualize, Sam, maybe like how compute constrained do you feel today? And do you, when you look at the build out over the course of the next two to three years, do you think you'll ever get to the point where you're not compute constrained? We talk about this question of, is there ever enough compute a lot? I think the answer is the only the best way to think about this is like a energy or something. You can talk about demand for energy at a certain price point, but you can't talk about demand for energy without talking about at different, you know, different demand at different price levels. If the price of compute per like unit of intelligence or whatever, however you want to think about it, fell by a factor of a hundred tomorrow, you would see usage go up by much more than a hundred. And there'd be a lot of things that, people would love to do with that compute that just make no economic sense at the current cost, but there would be new kind of demand. So I think the, the now on the other hand is the models get even smarter and you can use these models to cure cancer or discover novel physics or drive a bunch of humanoid robots to construct a space station or whatever crazy thing you want. Then maybe there's huge willingness to pay a much higher rate cost per unit of intelligence for a much higher level of intelligence that we don't know yet, but I would bet there will be. So I, I think when you talk about capacity, it's, it's like a, you know, cost per unit and, you know, capability per unit. And you have to kind of, without those curves, it's sort of a made up number. It, it's not a super well-specified problem. Yeah. I mean, I think the one thing that, you know, Sam, you've talked about, which I think is the right way is to think about is that if intelligence is more of a log of compute, then you try and really make sure you keep getting efficient. And so that means the tokens per dollar per yeah. watt. Uh, and the economic value that the society gets out of it is what we should maximize and reduce the costs. And so that's where, if you sort of where, like the Jevons paradox point is that, right? which is you keep reducing it, commoditizing in some sense intelligence uh, so that it becomes the real driver of GDP growth all around. Unfortunately, it's something closer to uh, log of intelligence equals log of compute, but we may figure out better scaling laws and we may yeah. figure out how to beat this yet. <laughs> We heard from both Microsoft and Google yesterday, both said their cloud businesses would have been growing faster if they have more GPUs. You know, I asked Jensen on this pod if there was any chance over the course of the next five years we would have a compute glut. And he said it's virtually non-existent chance in the next two to three years. And I assume you guys would both agree with Jensen that while we can't see out five, six, seven years certainly over the course of the next two to three years for the, th for the reasons we just discussed, that it's almost a non-existent chance that you have excess compute. Well, I mean, I think the, the cycles of demand and supply in this particular case, you can't really predict, right? I mean, even the, the point is, what's the secular trend? The secular trend is what Sam said, which is at the end of the day, because quite frankly, the biggest issue we are now having is not a compute glut, but it's a power. And it's sort of the ability to get the bills done fast enough close to power. So if you can't do that, you may actually have a bunch of chips sitting in inventory that I can't plug in. In fact, that is my problem today, right? It's right. not a supply issue of chips. It's actually uh, the fact that I don't have warm shells to plug into. And so how some supply chain constraints emerge, tough to predict, uh, because the demand is just going, you know, is tough to predict, right? I mean, I wouldn't, yeah. you know, it's not like Sam and I would want to be sitting here saying, oh my God, we are less short on compute. It's because we just were not that good at being able to project out what the demand would really look like. So I think that that's, and by the way, the worldwide side, right? One, it's one thing to sort of talk about one segment in one country, but it's about you know, really getting it out to everywhere in the world. And so there will be constraints and how we work through them is going to be the most important thing. It won't be a linear path for sure. 
there, there will come a glut for sure. And whether that's like in two to three years or five to six, Satya and I can't tell you, but uh, like it's going to happen at some point, probably several points along the way. Like this is, right. there's something deep about human psychology here and bubbles. And also, as Satya said, like there's, it's such a complex supply chain, weird stuff gets built. The technological landscape shifts in big ways. So, you know, if a very cheap, form of energy comes online soon at mass scale. And a lot of people are going to be extremely burned with existing contracts they've signed. It, if, if we can continue this unbelievable reduction in cost per unit of intelligence, let's say yes. it's been averaging like 40 X for a given level per year, you know, that's like a very scary exponent uh, from an infrastructure build out standpoint. Now, again, we're taking the bet that there'll be a lot more demand as that gets cheaper, but, I have some fear that it's just like, man, we keep going with these breakthroughs and everybody can run like a personal AGI on their laptop and we just did an insane thing here. Some people are gonna get really burned like has happened in every other tech infrastructure cycle at some points along the way. OpenAI says if they had 10 times more compute, they could have close to 10 times more revenue, not because they're supply constrained, but because the demand for AI is fundamentally unlimited at the right price point. OpenAI is so compute constrained that 10 times more compute would translate to nearly 10 times more revenue, providing the demand for AI isn't being held back by adoption, but by pure infrastructure capacity to deliver what consumers already want. This is extraordinary when you think about what it means. Most businesses are demand constrained. They have capacity, but need to find customers willing to buy. OpenAI and Microsoft seem to have the opposite problem. They have customers ready to pay right now, but can't serve them because they literally don't have enough compute capacity. OpenAI claims 10x more compute would give them not that far off. We have the description of a near linear scaling between infrastructure and revenue. That's something which almost never happens in business. Usually you hit some form of diminishing returns. The first customers are easy. The next ones are harder to find and serve. But the information we're getting here is that AI demand is so strong that every unit of compute you add translates almost directly to revenue. And what's interesting here is we have information that they already scale compute 10x in the past year and are still massively constrained. OpenAI didn't scale 10x and then hit a demand ceiling. They scaled 10x and demand grew faster than their capacity. That's exponential demand meeting linear supply growth, which creates persistent shortages. Greg Brockman saying this publicly on CNBC is significant and Microsoft CEO Satya confirming Microsoft Cloud would have grown faster with more compute also validates this across the entire AI infrastructure market. It's not just OpenAI serving ChatGPT users, it's enterprises building AI applications on Azure, researchers training models, startups deploying AI products. Every layer of the AI stack is hitting compute constraints simultaneously. This justifies the hundreds of billions of dollars being spent on AI infrastructure. When OpenAI can credibly claim 10x compute would give them close to that in revenue, the ROI on infrastructure spending is clear. It doesn't seem to be speculative investing, hoping to find customers later. It's building capacity to serve customers who are already trying to buy, but being turned away due to rate limits and capacity constraints. But the demand story gets even more interesting when you understand how price affects what people will use AI for. Compute demand can't be understood without price. If cost per unit of intelligence dropped 100x, usage would increase far more than 100 because entirely new use cases become economically viable. Sam explains you can't talk about demand for energy without talking about different demand at different price levels. If the price of compute per unit of intelligence fell by a factor of 100 tomorrow, you would see usage go up by more than 100 because there'd be a lot of things people would love to do with that compute that just do not make economic sense at the current costs. I think this is interesting and reframes the conversation about AI demand from how much AI do people want to how much intelligence can people afford. Those are completely different questions with very different implications. Think about what becomes economically viable at different price points. At current AI costs, maybe it makes sense to use AI for customer service, code generation, content creation, high value tasks where the AI saves expensive human labor. But using AI to optimize every minor decision in a supply chain, to personalize every interaction on a website, to provide tutoring to every student, those might not be economically viable yet because the compute cost exceeds the current value created. But if costs were to drop by 100 times, suddenly all those marginal use cases become profitable. 
a company that couldn't justify us using AI for minor optimizations at $1 per query will absolutely use it for everything at one cent per query. That's not just 100x more usage, it's potentially 1000x or 10,000x more usage because you're unlocking entirely new categories of applications. The same logic applies to intelligence. At current AI costs, people use it selectively for important tasks. If intelligence became 100x cheaper, people would use it constantly for trivial tasks. Asking AI to plan every meal, optimize every decision, write every email, analyze every document. The addressable market expands dramatically. And Satya made what I thought was a fascinating point, commoditizing intelligence as a GDP driver. When something becomes cheap enough for everyone to use, it stops being a luxury and becomes infrastructure. Electricity was once expensive and only used for lighting. As it got cheaper, it powered factories, computers, air conditioning, became fundamental to economic activity. Intelligence following the same path means it gets embedded into every process and decision. The higher end argument is equally as important. As AI capabilities increase, willingness to pay increases non-linearly. Companies would pay vastly more for AI that can cure cancer than for AI that writes emails. The value curve isn't flat. Breakthrough capabilities could command premium pricing because the economic value is enormous. This creates two simultaneous dynamics cost falling, making intelligence ubiquitous at the low end, and capabilities improving, making intelligence extremely valuable at the high end. Both expand the market, just in different directions. Together, they suggest the market for AR compute is effectively unlimited at the right cost capability combination. Picture this, a potential client searches for what your business offers and your YouTube video appears. Before they've even booked a call, they've built trust with you, turning them into a warm lead. That's why our clients are hitting $100,000 months because YouTube turns attention into authority. If you run a business, book a call and I'll show you exactly how to make this happen.